Hey, Southo, it's Mrs. Z back with another read aloud. Today I'm reading a book about Georgia O'Keeffe, an artist. I am reading Georgia in Hawaii, When Georgia O'Keeffe Painted What She Pleased by Amy Noveski, illustrated by Yui Morales. Georgia in Hawaii, reading with permission from Harcourt Children's Books. After five days at sea, Georgia O'Keeffe arrived on a green island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. She was greeted with silver coins and lays of plumeria, wild ginger, and crown flower. Aloha, Georgia. It was February 1939, and the Hawaiian Pineapple Company had invited the famous artist to tour Hawaii. They wanted her to create two paintings to promote the delights of pineapple juice. Georgia visited the pineapple field soon after her arrival on the island of Oahu. She found the sharp and silvery fruit quite strange and beautiful. She wanted to live nearby so she could study it up close. But the pineapple company would not let her. Only workers lived near the fields, they said. Georgia protested that she was a worker too and could live wherever she wanted. The company refused to allow it. Instead, they presented her with a pineapple. Georgia was disgusted. She did not want to paint the fruit now that it had been picked and she would not let anyone tell her what to paint. Despite the pineapple trouble, Georgia started her, her tour. She flew to the island of Maui. There she stayed on an old sugar plantation at the edge of a rainforest and carried a paper umbrella when it rained. In a borrowed banana wagon, she drove the tightly winding mountain roads. Georgia went where she wanted, when she wanted. And Georgia painted Georgia painted waterfalls and green pleated mountains. Lava hardened into fantastic shapes and delicate feathered fish hooks that she collected like seashells. And Georgia painted the blue, blue sea. Next, she traveled by steamer to the big island of Hawaii where she admired volcanoes that rose thousands of feet into the sky. She walked on black sand beaches, reached only by boat, and studied a rare piece of red coral. She met the local cattle ranchers, or paniolo. These Hawaiian cowboys showed her their gardens. And Georgia painted flowers. Birds of paradise and philodendron, long, foot-long heliconia and fragrant plumeria, Torch ginger and silver cup, lotus and hibiscus. She painted a nana honua that she picked by the side of the road. It reminded Georgia of her favorite desert flower, the jimson weed. In Kauai, her last stop, Georgia visited with local artists. She stayed at the seaside home of a former Hawaiian queen near Koloa a small mill town surrounded by fields of wild sugar cane. Soon she was used to the scent of burning sugar in the air. Georgia was even starting to look like an island girl. Too, but too soon, Georgia's Hawaiian tour was over. It was now April and her time to return home. From the decks of an elegant ocean liner, Georgia watched the green islands grow smaller and smaller until it was just her and the sea and the sky. Georgia had created nearly 20 paintings of Hawaii, but she had not painted a pineapple. Instead, she gave the Hawaiian Pineapple Company paintings of heliconia flower and a papaya tree. They were not happy. They wanted a pineapple. Georgia was not happy either. She was not going to be told what to paint. But then she thought about Hawaii and all that it had given her. She decided to give the company what they wanted. 36 hours later, a Hawaiian pineapple arrived at Georgia's penthouse in New York City, though Georgia didn't need it. When she closed her eyes, she could still see Hawaii. 
see Hawaii and its shape and beautiful fruit. And Georgia painted a pineapple. And that, my friends, is Georgia in Hawaii. A little bit of the author's note for you. It says, Georgia O'Keeffe was an artist, American artist, famous for her paintings of flowers when the Hawaiian Pineapple Company, later known as Dole, approached her to create two paintings for them. At first, Georgia wasn't very excited to travel all the way to the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But once she began to study maps and pictures of Hawaii, she was eager to go. Georgia took a train from her home in New York City across the country to San Francisco. There, she climbed on the gangplank of the SS Lure Line and sailed to the city of Honolulu on the island of Oahu. Oahu. The Hilo Tribune Herald, a local newspaper, announced her arrival with noted woman artist arrives for visit. While the Honolulu advertiser mentioned O'Keeffe's hunter green wool ensemble accented by crown flower lace and pink camellia blossoms. Georgia loved Hawaii. She said that visiting there was one of the best things she'd ever, she ever did. Beside the pineapple incident, her one regret was that she didn't keep that rare piece of red coral she had found on the beach. A year after returning home, Georgia showed 20 paintings of Hawaii, including her paintings of the heliconia flower and the pineapple, entitled Pineapple Bud, at a famous New York City gallery called An American Place, owned by her husband, Alfred Stieglitz. One reviewer from the New York World Telegram wrote, Her bird of paradise, her hibiscuses, and her fish hooks, silhouetted against the blue Hawaiian water, are exciting and beautiful. And Georgia wrote, if my painting is what I have to give back to the world for what the world has given to me, these paintings are what I have to give for what three months in Hawaii gave to me. And that, my friends, is Georgia in Hawaii.